Hey guys, welcome to the VFX show, the show on the internet that teaches you how to do visual effects for your next film. And today, I'm going to be teaching you how to color grade without plugins inside of After Effects. Now, uh, there's a few ways to do it, but I'm going to show you my personal um, color grading process that I do. Because I do color grade in After Effects. Um, I do have a few plugins that you could use, but I found that this without plugins is actually one of the most controllable and easiest ways to color grade and actually get a very good shot. So let's, uh, let's, uh, do it. Okay. So I have this shot here. Nice looking shot that I filmed, um, while I was driving. Uh, don't do that by the way. That's dangerous. I shot it, um, on a can, uh, not a can, a, uh, Panasonic G7. Uh, in 4K uh, with Cine D, which is a flat profile. And uh, you want to film in a flat profile, meaning uh, you, it's uh, pretty contrasty and the shots look kind of gross, kind of like log images. Um, and you want to film in a flatter profile so you can mess with the blacks just a little bit and, you know, add to the shadows and, you know, you want a pretty dynamic shot so that's why you want to shoot in a flat profile so that's the first thing you want to do before you go into uh, 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 color grading so now that I've got the shot done we're gonna throw in my aspect ratio bars I use uh, 2.05 it's literally my favorite um, it's my favorite um, aspect ratio uh, it's not like an anamorphic but it's it's there and it makes it look cinematic. Oh God! Oh my! Oh sushi! <clears throat> Sorry about that. I got the sushi burps. Okay, so what we're gonna do is first um, type in levels and throw that into our uh, little effects thing here, and we're gonna start crushing the shadows a little bit so we get a pretty contrasty shot if we up these highlights ooh no 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 if we up the up the highlights a little bit give it a little bit more light to the sky and then crush those blacks just a little bit we get a nice contrasty shot already looking pretty better it's already looking better now what we want to do is add the key ingredient to this um, whole tutorial, selective color. It's in your color correction tabs, in your effects and presets. Selective color is a plugin that many people overlook and many people don't actually take advantage of. And I think it's one of the vital tools in color grading and color correction. For one, you can select all the colors that are in your shot and uh, adjust it to exactly the color you want and the exact percentage. It's a very, very good tool. And let me show you how it works. Here you have your colors and you have reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, magentas, whites, neutrals, and blacks. And they all have the same layout here. They have cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Here, you can adjust it to negative 100 or positive 100 to get the effect. Now, I'm actually, what I'm going to do is show you in the neutrals to see what you can do. The black, if you adjust that, it will crush your blacks. And if you adjust that, it will make it more white. Your cyans will make it, obviously, more cyan at 100%. And a little bit more red, the opposite of cyan, or pink, um, when you get negative. Magenta adds magenta or green backwards to it and of course yellow adds yellow and then backwards it adds more of a pure blue so that's essentially how it works a very simple process now I'm gonna show you how I will make this shot look a lot better um, through the the process of selective color so we have a few reds in the shot and I want them to punch a little bit so I'm gonna make it negative um, thousand on my cyan a hundred percent on my magenta 
and 100% on my yellow, or like a little bit, and I'm going to give it a little bit more contrast, so I'm going to add a few, uh, like 70% of black, just to give that a punch, and obviously, already doing pretty good for the shot. There's not a whole bunch of yellows, but it, they are there. And here, we can adjust what we want here, and I think I'm just going to add more yellow and magenta. Eh, a little bit too much. So, something around there. Already punching it up a little bit. Uh, we don't have a lot of greens in this shot, and if I show you, this isn't going to be something that, if I mess with, it'd be very noticeable, but I think if, that yeah, looks completely the same. <laughs> so let's go to Cyan's. Um, this is like kind of the darker colors, and I'm going to obviously add more Cyan. And I don't know, maybe I want this sky to be a little bit more playful blue, like teal. You know what I'm saying? Just depends on the mood you want for the shot. Like, this, of course, this shot has no mood to it. And it's it's like a darkish, like, you know, colorful shot, you know. You need that colorful, you know, shot. I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. But, um, I don't know, maybe add a... Some, like, green tealness to it, to the cyans. That looks good. And then, of course, our blues. Same boat. I think what I'll do... Is do something like that. Looks pretty good. Obviously adding a good amount to the shot already. There's not a whole bunch of magentas in this shot, so we're just going to skip it. And our whites. It's obviously all these up here. And we're going to make it going to make it cyan. Okay, so yeah, giving a good amount of color to that sky. Now we can go our neutrals and really get the tone of everything of this shot. So, of course, we're going to add some blue to the shot. Maybe like actual blue, so negative yellow. Something like that. Looks pretty good. Let me go to our blacks. And add what you want your shadows to be. I kind of want them to be a little bluer. And actually I want a kind of faded look. So I'm going to bring a uh, negative the blacks to give that faded look. Just kind of like that. And add some cyan, or maybe maybe want it to be like a little red, you know. Give it a little more oomph. And boom, you've really transformed this shot into something completely different, which is nice. Looks it look, it looks beautiful. Sorry about the people stepping upstairs. Um. All right. Uh, so now what we want to do is hit Control Y. Holy crap! Stop stepping upstairs, y'all. That'd be nice. And we're gonna add a black solid over everything. And we're gonna add our vignette. Uh, you probably already done this before. Uh, and go down to your drop menu for your masking and hit Ellipse tool. Double click it. Now you have an ellipse. Um, let's open this guy up, double click on one of the points, hit control, and um, these top two points, bring them down so the, it uh, fills the aspect ratio. 
boom boom, hit subtract, hit F, feather the crap out of it. Then hit T for opacity, and that's how I remember T for opacity, and add a add that subtle vignetting to the whole thing. Looks pretty. Looks pretty uh, good. Looks pretty. Looks pretty good. Um, what else would I do? Um, since I did shoot this with a pretty soft lens, I shot it with like a vintage lens, I would add an unsharp mask and I'd put it below everything just to sharpen it up a little bit. I wouldn't do too much because this shot has some graining issues, but it's not like terrible color grain, it's just regular grain. Um, but if you, you know, add too much, it really emphasizes that grain. And that might be what you're going for, but it's not what I'm going for, so it's hit 50 on that. And we got a pretty cool looking shot. <clears throat> with a few plugins all inside of After Effects. Now, some people are gonna say, oh well there's another program called SA Color Finesse. And you know what? I'm not gonna say that SA Color Finesse is bad. It actually works practically the same way. If we go down here, we say, oh, you know, and you can get just different looks, and like we get this teal look, Add some shadows and add some midtones that are like tealish and highlights, whatevers. It really can get the same effect, but it, look at this. So many things you gotta click. And like, is there, just you know, it's just harder to, it's really harder to mess your brain around and then you have, of course, have the full interface, which is pretty good, but <clears throat> this is three plugins that you can put onto your shot to make your shot look pretty dope. And I'm sorry, I said dope. Um, and of course you can, maybe we could duplicate that. Oh my, oh my god. That looks so crazy. And you can really really go for all out with the selective color. You can duplicate the selective color, mess around with it more, and even add more. And it's, I love selective color because you can really select exactly the colors you want to mess with and exactly what you want to tune it into. You know, so it's a great thing. And I would, if I had a skin tones in here, if somebody's skin was kind of pale, you can go in the whites or the neutrals, or whatever, and make their skin a little more red and a little more magenta, so you can mess with it a little bit. Um, and this really helps to create a tone. Because, honestly, if I, you know, turn this off, this shot kind of has a tone, but it it's not, you know, it, color grading is a great, great way to emphasize um, character of a scene and it's a great storytelling tool to tell the tone of your story and this is my method um uh, you can go with anybody else's method but this is my method and i hope you like the video and if you can please hit that subscribe button and also watch this video in its full um fullness uh it's like 50 times that'd be nice so i can get some you know, more money, you know, more money would be nice. I don't have a Patreon because, you know, <laughs> who gives a shit? Anyway, um, peace out, Home Scout. Oh, I'm bad at things.